We're in the book of Hebrews, chapter 5. It's a good place for a recap. When you look at the book of Hebrews, it shows us a high view of Jesus, that Jesus is truly exalted. The way it does that is by comparing him to other characters that appear in the Bible. Chapter 1, he is so much greater than any of the angels. Chapter 1 and 2 focus on this. Chapter 3 focuses on how much greater Jesus is than Moses. And then chapters 3 and 4 are focusing on Joshua and how much greater Jesus is than Joshua and how much greater the rest is that Jesus brings than the rest to which Joshua brought the people of Israel. That was not the true rest. It was the shadow of the rest that Jesus would accomplish, the salvation that Jesus would accomplish for us. That brings us to chapter 5. Chapter 5. And at the end of chapter 4 and in chapter 5, also toward the end of chapter 2, we're seeing Jesus as the great high priest who offers the sacrifice to end all sacrifices. And in chapter 5, Jesus is greater than any high priest that ever lived. But that's going to be a running theme throughout the book of Hebrews as well. The, the comparison of Jesus to the high priest of Israel is woven throughout the book of Hebrews, and, and you'll hopefully be able to see that. Uh, we've already seen it. You know, he appeared very much like that in chapter 2. Now we are in chapters 4 and 5, where, that we're all dealing with the person of the high priest and how Jesus is the fulfillment of all that the high priest meant to be. One way that he is the fulfillment of the high priest is the sympathy of the high priest. The sympathy that the high priest is perfect to be a go-between between God and us in that he is a human being full of weaknesses just like you and me. At the end of chapter 4, this is the verse that you need to be very aware of. Uh, let's see. Verse 15, we do not have, chapter 4, verse 15, we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we are, yet without sin. He was beset with weaknesses, just like you and me. He faced the same kind of temptations, just as you and I do. Yet in all of them, he has endured to the very end of the weight of the temptation, and has overcome. He has faced every temptation so he can identify with us. He has overcome every temptation so that he can give us the victory. Yeah, he's the perfect, the perfect high priest. That's why in the beginning of chapter 5, he says, he's pointing out to the, the, the essence, the, the, the perfectness of the human high priest, in that the high priest is also beset with weaknesses, so he can sympathize with us who are weak. Just as a human high priest shows that he can understand, and he is the perfect counselor for those who struggle with sin, for those who struggle with illnesses. So Jesus is perfectly human. And so he identifies perfectly with all of our struggles. In fact, you know, I, I make this argument all the time that Jesus identifies with our struggles better than anybody, any, any high priest or any other human being can because he dwells within our hearts by the person of the Holy Spirit. So he, he endures what we endure as we are enduring those circumstances. He knows you better than you know yourself, loved one. He is such a high priest. So, more sympathetic than anyone, more sympathetic than your mother or your best friend or your husband or wife, for that matter. He is our perfect high priest. So that's why in Hebrews chapter 5, verses 2 through 3, the Bible says this, speaking of the human high priest, Israelite high priest, as a shadow, a reflection of Jesus, it says this, He, the high priest, can deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is beset with weaknesses. Ah, isn't that good? 
because our high priest knows what it is to be weak, just like the Israelite high priest did. He is able to deal gently with us and how we need to be dealt with gently. He could so easily break us. (laughs) I remember one person, one pastor was pointing out that all Jesus had to do when he met Peter after his resurrection was to look at him and go like this. For the three times Peter denied him, just "Mm, mm." but he doesn't do that. He deals gently with Peter, and so he deals gently with you and me, completely identifying with all of our weaknesses. Truly, he was broken, just as we are broken. But now, focus on verse three. Because of this, he, the human high priest, is obligated to offer sacrifice for his own sins, just as he does for for those of the people. And you look at that and you say, wait a minute, wait, 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 there's a little bit of a disconnect. You say, Pastor Paul, that this is a shadow, that the human high priest, the Israelite high priest, is a shadow of our Lord Jesus. Yes, he is. I would say, yes, he is. But, Pastor Paul, it says here that that high priest has to offer sacrifice for his own sin. That's right. Good point. Jesus doesn't have to offer sacrifice for his own sin because he has not. But that's kind of precisely the point, isn't it? All of Jesus' sacrifice was for us. The effectiveness of it, the cleansing of it was for us, not for himself. And that's why Jesus is not only like the high priest of old, but he is greater. And there are many ways that he is greater. He he is greater in longevity. He he lives to intercede for us. We're going to see that a little bit later. He is greater in the sacrifice that he offers. It's a once and for all sacrifice, one that, that does not have to be repeated again. There are many, many other ways, but here is one. Jesus never has to offer sacrifice for his own sin. He has none. Then all of the sacrifice that he offers was purely as cleansing for you and me. A perfect expression of love, loving obedience to the Heavenly Father and perfectly effective for your salvation and for mine. Is not Jesus beautiful? He is. If you look at this, you also think of, uh, this illustrates it, I think, illustrates what I'm saying quite well. The high priest, or the priests in general, are called upon to cleanse the lepers or pronounce them clean when the disease is no longer affecting them. And the priests do not become dirty because of it. The priests are called upon to pronounce a house unclean when the leprous disease is gone. The, 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 the priest is permitted to, to go and examine what the Israelites are not called to do. But they do this in a limited fashion. Because they too get dirty, they need to offer sacrifices for their own uncleanness. Similarly, as the priests are called upon to deal with the lepers and deal with leprous homes, Jesus is called upon. (laughs) Jesus deals with lepers and leprous communities like yours and mine with the unclean. And yet when he touches the unclean, isn't that beautiful? The way that he heals the lepers. He doesn't just speak, though he can and has done that. We see scenes where Jesus goes out of his way to touch the leper. He touches the leper and cleanses him. And I love the beautiful story of the ten lepers where Jesus, they, came, they came to Jesus. Jesus healed them. They all leave and then one comes back. They all leave because Jesus told them to leave to show, the, to show, their, show themselves to the priest. 
technically speaking, the nine were obeying, but one of them was not. The one Samaritan that came back to Jesus to thank him. But it turns out, he was the one who was being obedient. They all didn't know, but he's the one who returned to the true high priest of his soul, King Jesus, to thank him. Where does that leave us? It leaves us with our great high priest, King Jesus, his perfect sacrifice on our behalf. Surely it is good encouragement for us, weak as we are, to come to him, to find our rest, our rest from sin, our rest from illness, our rest, true, true rest that can only be found in him our eternal and great high priest. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for being our great high priest. Holy Spirit, thank you for raising him from the dead and causing this sacrifice to be perfectly offered on our behalf. Heavenly Father, thank you for accepting the ministry of our great high priest, King Jesus. And Lord, help us now to act upon all that Jesus has done and apply it to ourselves, leaning only upon the power and the perfection of our great high priest, King Jesus. Come boldly to your throne in our time of need, Find cleansing that only you can give. And then, unhindered by sin, celebrate you and give you worship as you deserve. We do love you. Help us, Lord, to express it in all that we do today. May our thoughts be pleasing to you. May our thoughts, the meditation of our hearts, be pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh